Thank you all for joining us here. I'm uh, happy to uh, share with you some mischief that I've been getting into the last 16 months. Uh, I became dean um, year and a, about a year and a half ago and uh, was curious about why the outcomes in our graduate programs varied so much. In what I was thinking about in terms of outcomes included the fraction of students who finished uh, each degree program, uh, the fraction of students who finished within six years, and then uh, we were also curious about why st students dropped out of some programs after their third year without getting a, a PhD. So we measured uh, those uh, outcome parameters. Uh, and then I was curious about uh, why this might be true, because the students are basically the same. You can't tell uh, any difference among the students uh, in the various programs. They have the same kind of qualifications and so on. They're all bright, uh, apparently motivated students. So uh, we went looking for uh, uh, an explanation and did a survey of the uh, departments and programs and asked them how they manage their graduate programs, what kind of support they provided to their students, not financial support, because that's the same across the board, but what kind of academic support, how often that they met with their students, and, in, and what kind of interactions they had. Uh, and the remarkable result of this analysis was that uh, there's a very strong correlation between the strength of the academic support, the strength of the mentoring, and the outcomes. Uh, we have a report that we published about this uh, in August. It's called Improving Graduate Education at Yale, and the graphs are way too small for you to see from the back of the room, but I'll pretend I'm the graph here. So on this <laughs> axis, I'm going to write the, the intensity of the support by the faculty, and on this axis, the outcomes. And the data are scattered like this but there's a very strong correlation between good practices and good outcomes. And the, the, they actually sort of fall into two of the four quadrants. A group down in the lower left-hand quadrant where the outcomes aren't so good and the support isn't so good. And another group that's up in the upper right-hand quadrant where the support is good and the outcomes are good. Now, uh, the, this correlation doesn't explain all the variables in the system. There are extenuating circumstances, some fields it just takes a little bit longer, and so on. But this is actually very good news because what this tells us is if we could identify what the good practices are in managing a graduate program, and if we shared them with everybody, and if I could convince the faculty to implement all these uh, good mentoring practices, I am confident that the outcomes would improve. So uh, we came to this conclusion last summer and started to talk with some of the programs. And we started with the ones that were in the lower left-hand quadrant that were struggling. And it turned out by simply sitting down with the chair and the director of graduate studies in most of these programs that we actually accomplished a lot of our goals. Because simply by laying out where they stood, and we identified where they were on the graph to them, but not to anybody else, uh, and going through the things that they might or might not be doing, we identified sort of a to-do list for them to improve their programs. And by now we've seen about, oh, 45 or 50 of the graduate programs, and virtually everyone is appreciative of our effort to identify how they could do better. We also collected uh, a beginning uh, collection of best practices. This is 30 pages of best practices from across the university, and we found all sorts of fascinating, creative, uh, uh, techniques that people were using to help their graduate students. And of course, we shared this and, and our report with all of the graduate students and all of the uh, faculty across the university. So everybody has access to these good ideas. Our, our best departments, in fact, our highest performing departments didn't need any encouragement, such as Peter's department. <laughs> Uh, psychology, which was really one of our stellar programs. They looked through all the things that we listed that we wanted them to do. They found three things that they weren't doing, had a faculty meeting, and unanimously agreed to start doing them. So this is perfect. Now, of course, I get the people in the lower left-hand quadrant to move quite that quickly. It would be fabulous. Okay, so that we have no sticks and no carrots at the moment, because I'm hoping for voluntary implementation of these uh, these best practices, and I'm hoping that the students are, are going to be my ally, 
because at matriculation and at every other chance I have to speak to the students, I point out these things that we expect the faculty to be doing and ask them to go back and engage their faculty in the conversation about how to move forward. <clears throat> now that having been said, uh, there's still some uh, additional needs and the <coughs> Alumni Association actually can help us with, with, with some of these, uh, but not all of them. So let me start with a couple internal ones. One is it turns out to my shock uh, that we have about uh, 500 graduate students at Yale in humanities departments who have no place to work on campus. They don't have an office, they don't have a, a desk they can share someplace, and uh, don't ask me how this happened, but I'm determined to find them a place to work. Because if they don't have a place to work, they can't uh, develop a community with their uh, peers and with their faculty. Uh, and uh, the provost and the president are four square behind this effort, and uh, it's gonna involve uh, repurposing some space so that we could uh, make, make that possible. Uh, another thing we're uh, working on is to work with our peer institutions to try to develop more uh, postdoctoral opportunities, particularly in the humanities, because the job market's just horrible in the humanities these days, and we want to give our students and students from our peer institutions a, a, a leg up by giving them a little bit more experience as a postdoc where they can finish their book and uh, make a bigger mark in their field. Uh, we need to help our students with placement. Um, uh, the, the faculty tell me that they simply don't have the expertise to help their students with placement outside of the academic community. Uh, personally, I find that rather amazing since uh, a one, uh, more than half of biologists go into something other than becoming a professor. So we're all used to, to uh, that, uh, th those sort of outcomes. But in the humanities, they say they don't know how to help them get into the museum business or, or other lines of work. So we're going to have to help them with that. But this is where the alumni can be helpful to us. Uh, one of the things we need to do is to expand our students' horizons uh, so they think outside of the academic community into all the wonderful things you can do with a, uh, the training you get in a PhD program. And we've been working with the Graduate School Alumni Association, I see some of my friends here in the front, uh, uh, trying to come up with my ideas about how to do that. Uh, we were talking about internships, the, the idea of this week, Raul, so you know, is something simpler than an internship, maybe just an opportunity to shadow somebody who's running a museum or are working in private industry or something like that. Spend a week with somebody just to see what the heck it's all about. And we think that the just uh, a relatively simple exposure to uh, opportunities outside of the academic community will help them think about their, their futures. So uh, that, that's where, that's the mischief I've been getting into the uh, last 16 months. And I'm, I'm thrilled that we have uh, dozens of, of serious discussions going on around campus about how to improve graduate education. Thank you. <laughs> I should point out if you're interested to look at these documents, they are available on the Graduate School uh, website.